We'll do Dr. Paul, Frank Clegg, Peter Sullivan, and Theodora. And if we could have you remove your landlord. All right, so in the next seven minutes, Dr. Martin Paul, who is a professor emeritus at uh, Washington State University, mm -hmm. he's now retired from a paycheck, but he is very much engaged in his research still. So thank you, Dr. Thank Paul. You. Give me a one minute uh, okay. warning, please. Okay, so we've got a lot of work to do. Let me just say uh, on my, uh, I, I submitted on the site not only my slides, but also a 90 page document that has documentation on everything that I'm going to talk about. So I won't give you any documentation whatsoever here. We don't have time for it, I'm sorry. Um, the current US and international safety guidelines are based only on thermal effects. But there are many non-thermal effects that occur at, at uh, levels orders of magnitude lower than those allowed by these guidelines. So the guidelines are almost totally irrelevant to the actual health effects. Uh, and so what I'm going to do here is talk about initially eight things that are extensively documented and based on large numbers of review articles that have been written. Okay. And the uh, and, uh, first one I'll talk about is lowered fertility. There are a whole bunch of mechanisms that are involved in producing lower fertility. And as I'll say later, we're in terrible trouble on this. We're already seeing huge effects in human populations. There are also neurological and neuropsychiatric effects uh, based on 25 reviews. And if you look at these things, if you have time to read them, you'll see that they include all the things that almost everybody is complaining about nowadays. And we know that those are caused by EMF exposures uh, based on uh, uh, many, many different reviews. We're already in great trouble on these. There are also cellular DNA damage of three different types uh, based on uh, 21 reviews. And these are very important for causing both cancer and for causing germline mutations. I think we're probably in great trouble on those as well. We have uh, high levels following exposures of, uh, I guess I'll move over here, of apoptosis, uh, programmed cell death, uh, based on 13 reviews. That's important for these reasons. And you get oxidative stress and free radical damage uh, based on 19 reviews. So these are all extensively documented. Uh, there are still other things going on here. Oops. What's going on? Okay. You get endocrine effects and a large number of different endocrine effects. Uh, I, as far as I can tell, every single hormone system in the body is impacted. Uh, and there are uh, 12 reviews uh, regarding hormonal effects. You get excessive intracellular calcium. And this, as you'll find out uh, later, is the cause of almost everything that I'll talk about. So this is the underlying cause uh, behind everything else. Uh, there's cancer. There are 35 reviews on cancer causation by EMFs. And uh, it includes everything that goes on in the whole process of carcinogenesis. Now, pulsed EMFs, EMFs that pulse up and down, are in most cases much more biologically active than our non-pulsed or what are called continuous wave EMFs. And that's been shown in 13 different reviews. Because all wireless communication devices communicate via pulsations, they are potentially and I believe actually much more dangerous. So that's obviously a major issue. So uh, there are Several other effects for which there is uh, strong evidence, but not the kind of overwhelming evidence that we talked about before. There are cardiac effects that affect the electrical control of the heart. They are life-threatening. There, there's also evidence for very early onset Alzheimer's and other dementias, uh, and, uh, and those are obviously very consequential. Uh, we also get ADHD and autism apparently caused by late prenatal and early postnatal EMF exposures. It's my opinion that these are caused by the effects of intracellular calcium on the development of the synapses during the early development of the brain. So how does all this work? And this is my own work. 
uh, EMFs act primarily by activation of what are called voltage-gated calcium channels, and I abbreviate those VGCCs. And so what are these? These are channels that are in the plasma, plasma membrane that surrounds all of our cells, and when they're activated, they open up and you get excessive calcium flowing into the cell, and it's the excess calcium in the cell that's responsible for most, if not all, of the biological effects. So there's several pathways by which this, uh, this excessive calcium here work. And one of them is you get uh, high levels of nitric oxide and superoxide, uh, which react to form peroxynitrite, which is a potent oxidant, breaks down to form reactive free radicals, produce oxidative stress, and also produce uh, inflammation via NF-kappa B activation. So those are all involved in producing pathophysiological effects. You also get effects through excessive calcium signaling over here. Calcium signaling is very important in the cells of our bodies, and when you get too much of it, you get pathophysiological effects. There's another way in which, uh, these, in, in which this calcium works. When you get excessive nitric oxide, it can bite, bind to cytochromes, and that produces some responses. Nitric oxide also works via a nitric oxide signaling pathway. That produces therapeutic effects. There are genuine therapeutic effects of these EMFs, and that's uh, the, the pri primary mechanism by which they work. Um, there are four reasons why EMFs are much more active in children than in adults. Children have much higher surface-to-volume ratios. Children have high densities of stem cells, which are very sensitive to the EMFs. The developing brains of the children seem to be especially sensitive to the EMFs, and the tissues in the children have higher water content, and that also is important in increasing, uh, increasing sensitivity. For these reasons, things like Wi-Fi and cell phone tower radiation in schools uh, should be a major concern. Okay. Um, several of these effects, and I'll go through these very quickly, uh, show cumulative and eventually irreversible effects. And so what that means is basically the same exposures uh, produce more and more severe effects and they become irreversible with time. And so uh, when you have that kind of situation, obviously you're in great trouble. Uh, I think we're already very far along in terms of the reproductive effects and the neurological to neuropsychiatric effects and probably also the, the germline mutational effects. And these each produce uh, existential threats to our survival. Uh, now, let's talk about 5G, and this is my last slide. 5G will entail the use of much higher frequencies and pulsations than our current microwave devices. Uh, the much higher pulsations uh, allow 5G to carry much more information, uh, but basically because of these, of these um, uh, high frequencies and uh, high, high pulsations, the biological effects, I predict, will be much, much greater uh, because of, of the activation of the VGCCs. Uh, I, the other problem with 5G is they're, they're planning to put out tens of millions of these antennae all over the place, so it'll be almost impossible to avoid exposures. And so these are going to be all over. And they're, they're, the reason for that I think maybe somebody else can discuss because I don't seem to have any, any time to do that. So let me just say the current plan, which has already been approved by the U.S. Congress and the FCC, is to put out tens of millions of these 5G antennae, irradiating every single person and every other organism in the whole country without even a single biological safety test of genuine 5G radiation. This is, in my judgment, absolutely insane. Thank you very much.